What's up guys, Grim here. If you would left a comment in the comment section of my last Saturday video, then you are entered into the giveaway we were doing in it. And the winner of that giveaway is right there. Congratulations. We'll be getting a hold of you just shortly to find out what you want from the Rift store. This week we're changing it up a little bit with the 3.0 patch coming out in just a few weeks. It's going to be huge. So what would be a better giveaway? Well, how about a beta key guys? Yes, you will have access to the Nightmare Tide before anybody else. But with the change up of the giveaway prize, let's go ahead and change up how you enter as well. I'm going to have a link in the description below for a tweet that you need to retweet. Basically, I need more Twitter followers and you guys are going to help me get there hopefully. So if you have a Twitter account, just retweet my tweet and wow, that was kind of hard to say. But yeah, go ahead and do that and then I will pick a winner from the people that retweet the tweet. Which one of you guys are going to be joining me in the Nightmare Tide early? Good luck everybody. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you would like more beta key giveaways in the future. Before we get this build video going, I must say thank you to the anonymous donator that gave me $5 in my PayPal account. You rock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody that donates real money to me, I really, really appreciate it because you're supporting the channel. And if anybody would like to see more videos from me, that's definitely one way to do it is to support the channel with donations and stuff like that. That way I don't have to spend so much time at the job and I can actually stay home a little bit more to make videos for you guys and hopefully lots of build videos and war fronts. Wonder how many people would enjoy a video a day like I used to do. It's all about how much you guys want it. Oh, this is the build video that I've been putting off and putting off because it's a little bit complicated and I know you guys are going to struggle with it at first and it takes a lot of practice. So without further ado, let's get right into this. This is the shame and build video and let's jump right into it, I guess. All right. So as you can see, we go 61 into Shaman, 10 into Druid, and 5 into Inquisitor. And of course, fill up the entire tree with Shaman, and then the 10 points into Druid is 5 into Speak Softly, and 5 into Mercurial. And then the 5 points into Inquisitor is 5 into Planar Study. So if you guys would like to see this soul build on a web page, if you're not wanting to squint at your screen at the video here, I will have a link in the description below to where you can click on it and look at the build on Magello. It's an excellent website. I highly recommend you get your builds from there. And yeah, we'll have a Magello link for this build. All right, let's go into the macros. Now the macros here are to make it a little bit simpler on you guys, but really this build is still going to be a little bit complicated. I hope you guys can wing it and I've been putting it off all this time because I knew it would be a little bit complicated and I usually don't like throwing that stuff at you guys, especially whenever you're trying to learn a new spec. But this is the main physical macro and this will be... All the macros will be in the description below, just like the build, uh, soul build link will be. So you can copy and paste down there. If you have the right browser, a lot of people can't copy and paste off of YouTube because they're running the wrong browser. So there goes the first macro. Here goes our non-physical macro. And you'll see exactly why we have it physical and non-physical just shortly because I'm going to show you how to play it. All right, here is our main burst macro. This is the number one burst. And then this is our second burst. Now you don't necessarily need a second burst, but this will improve your damage quite a bit. So we want a second burst normally. All right, 
once we're done with that let's go ahead and go into the buffs here we got armor of devotion vengeance of the winter storm we got glory of the chosen furious assault and heart of the frozen sea all right on our bar down here the buttons that we have is our physical macro our non-physical macro burst number one burst number two vex which is a dot damage over time uh we got ride the lightning which is our charge we got frozen wrath lightning hammer eruption of life and then break free on a separate button do not put in macros guys all right then we have our interrupt which is bitter wind we have a snare which is snowbank we have jolt on a separate button because it's really good to have that separate so you can react to the procs and i'll show you about that just shortly and then we have some defensive macro uh defensive buttons here which is wind walk which increases your dodge and parry by 25 percent and increases your move speed by 50 percent so if you start to get in trouble pop that and you'll be able to run away a lot faster and you'll be dodging and parrying the attacks a little bit better and then we have numbing cold which this is a good spell to cast onto somebody to make it to where their healing and absorption received is hindered by 10 percent so all right let's get into how to play this build it's a simple concept but a little harder to execute than most of the other builds that you may see even on my channel i usually make it pretty simple for you guys that way that you can learn it and then start breaking the macros apart and using the ability separately if you want to but on this one we can't really make it too much more simple because it just won't work the same way so let's go into it basically we're going to be swapping between physical and non-physical attacks and the reason for that being is that there is a proc called frostbite and what frostbite does is it adds 30% damage to your next physical attack uh, anytime that we use a magical attack a non-physical attack it'll trigger that proc so let's start out real basic with this and hit the non-physical macro and as you can see I have K alerts to where it pops up the frostbite proc for me just to the left of my character you can see it there and it's up there in my buffs as well you see frostbite right there counting down so once that's up I know that we can hit our physical macro and it's going to hit a lot harder so we'll go ahead and hit that and then we'll go back to non-physical physical all right basically it's just back and forth like that is the basic concept of it all well for our normal rotation that's basically what we're going to be doing we're going to be applying some dots in between so we want to cast frozen wrath we want to cast lightning hammer and even eruption of life if you'd like because that's going to add to our damage but basically we're just going to be using these non-physical attacks and then throwing a physical attack in between to use up our frostbite proc uh, another thing that will be happening is that we'll also get another proc called uh, improved jolt which whenever that pops up we'll go ahead and use our jolt spell which is a reason why we have it on a separate button and that'll allow us to uh, use it up and it'll also trigger frostbite as well to where we can follow it up with a physical attack so to start out here we're going to apply frozen wrath you see our frostbite proc uh, came up we'll hit our physical attack we have the jolt macro comes um, uh, proc comes up so we'll use that and it triggers frostbite again go ahead and use that put up our lightning hammer and that's going to put up frostbite again hit our physical attack as you can see while i've been a, a talking uh frozen wrath this fell off but normally that's not going to happen that fast normally you'll come in you'll throw down frozen wrath on your opponent you'll hit them with the physical attack uh then you'll throw on your lightning hammer and then physical attack 
and then you can swap between physical and non-physical after that if you'd like you just want to make sure that you're keeping your frozen wrath and lightning hammer active on your opponent so that's the basic rotation for uh just hitting somebody normally all right so now we're going to go into our burst macro now this gets a little more complicated and hopefully you guys don't get too lost in this process but basically we need k alerts to keep up with a lot of our abilities so whenever we throw frozen wrath on people and stuff like that we need to know that it is used and timing down at that time and um so let's get right into it whenever we charge somebody we are going to be increasing our damage but really it's not that significant to where you need to charge somebody so if you don't get the charge off on your opponent don't worry about it too much but we're going to go ahead and do it here so we charge in okay what we want to do is we want to hit burst macro number one just one time and what that's going to do is that's going to apply 10 stacks of rage of the north which is going to make it to where we're basically going to hit somebody uh, with a critical hit 100% it's it's going to make sure that we critical hit all right so and then it'll apply critical hits afterwards as well so we got that up what we're going to do next is we're going to apply frozen wrath so let's hit that and then we're going to start spamming our burst macro until we use the massive blow and you see he did like an uppercut action there that is the massive blow after that we got our jolt proc which we want to normally use that so uh i let it fall while i was talking to you guys but normally you would hit jolt and then you would hit burst macro number two until you did another massive blow like you just seen and that's going to be your burst right there so burst macro number one one time to apply a rage of the north and then after that you want to use your frozen wrath apply it to your opponent after that go ahead and start spamming your burst macro number one until you do that uppercut action and use your massive blow and you can also keep up with it in k alert so it's easier to maintain if you get lost in the animations and stuff like that well after you do that your jolt proc is going to be up it is definitely going to be up so use jolt and it's going to hit extra hard since it's off the proc and then you use your burst macro number two to apply another massive blow and that second massive blow is going to hit even harder so that's the rotation of your burst macro and that's really what's going to make this shaman build really pop it's going to go you're going to be able to charge in throw down those cooldowns really fast and do 30,000 damage to somebody or something like that. It's going to be insane. And trust me, as soon as you start dropping people with that burst macro, you're going to love this build. Uh, I do have to say that you do not want to play this like a tank though. Do not play it if don't play it like a warrior so to say a lot of people are used to warriors being able to take a little bit of hits so they go in and they're going in with this shaming build and throw down a lot of dps and all of a sudden they get nuked and they're killed uh don't play it like that your main goal is to go in burst somebody down and then get out before they can really start targeting you and then you're going to have some ranged attacks and your ranged attacks are going to be really nice with shaman as well so as i was saying earlier you want to be able to apply your frozen wrath lightning hammer and then eruption of life on people normally uh the, the eruption of life isn't absolutely needed but it does help with your dps and if you want you can even throw a vex in there to apply additional damage but at range what we're going to do is we're going to apply frozen rats since it's 30 meters and then lightning hammer and then eruption of life and if you're used to uh, dot management like dotting people up you're going to find this pretty easy so after we apply those three abilities to somebody we can start hitting our just normal physical macro because we also have eckard's uh 
what is it, Eckert's Hand, I believe it's called. And that's our ranged attack. And we're going to spam that until we use up all of our Eruption of Life uh, procs, which is Life Surges. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how it works. Frozen Wrath, uh, like you see, I have it on K-Alerts. And then Lightning Hammer, Eruption of Life. And as you can see, it gave me five procs of that Life Surge. So we'll start spamming our first macro until we use up all of them life surges and then as you can see my frozen wrath fell off so i'm going to reapply that as well as lightning hammer and then eruption of life and let's get to using those procs again and as you can see I, i'm explaining it quite a bit so things are falling off a little bit faster but normally you'll be able to throw up those three things and then spam that number one uh, physical macro, which will be casting your Eckerd's hand at range. And you're not going to have to worry about too much until your burst macro is ready to go again. But I do have to add that you do not want to go ahead and close the gap and throw down that burst macro uh, unless you are sure that your deep freeze is up and also your rage of the north. Uh, as you can see, I have... Uh, the K alert showing uh, right above my action bars there. You can see where it shows the deep freeze, and I also have it saying burst macro, uh, burst below it. So I know that deep freeze is ready to go, and that's going to add a lot of damage and also stun the opponent for like three seconds. So whenever I go in, I'm casting my ranged attacks, and then I charge in and do my burst macro. It's going to it's going to apply that deep freeze and also rage in the north rage in the north should be up if your deep freeze is up because you're not using that stuff outside of the burst macro so usually you can just uh, maintain that deep freeze and go from there but if you are having a problem with your rage of the north not being up whenever you start your burst macro make sure that you put it on k alerts or something so that you can track it um let's see a few other notes about this let's see uh vex does not really count as a non-physical attack so uh it's not going to trigger your frostbite so you know you can cast that whenever it's good damage but don't really put it into your rotation as in thinking it's going to trigger frostbite and then follow up with a uh, physical attack uh, let's see you want to use glacial strike as much as possible that's the one that it's a non-physical attack that it only works whenever your opponent is below 30 percent life but don't worry about frostbite or any of that other stuff if glacial strike comes up use it use it anytime it is up because you never know they might get a heal and all of a sudden you missed your opportunity to hit them with it and it's going to hit for a lot of damage, so don't miss out on that, trust me. Uh, let's see, I wrote down a lot of stuff here. Let's make sure that I'm covering it all. Um, make sure you're using your Jolt procs uh, as they come up. Uh, keep Frozen Wrath and Lightning Hammer up on the opponents as much as possible. The only time that you really want Frozen Wrath to drop off is if you're about to do your Burst Macro. Because it's best if you apply it in the rotation of your burst macro uh if it's up beforehand as in you're fighting the person all of a sudden your rage of the north comes up and uh, deep freeze and all that and you want to use your burst macro sometimes you don't have the convenience of casting a fresh uh frozen wrath but that's just pvp everything doesn't work all uh, always in the correct order that you want it to but you want to be able to apply that frozen wrath separately if you can in your burst macro. Another thing that you may want to have going whenever you do your burst macro is you might want to apply your vex and all of your dots if you want to. But it's not really necessary, but it's kind of nice having all of that stuff ticking while you have all of that uh, damage increase going. So that's up to you. You know, your burst is going to be pretty insane without all of those dots and stuff. But if you can apply them as well, it's just icing on the cake. Trust me. 
So that's basically the shaming build. You're just going to want to make sure that you're keeping up your frozen wrath and your lightning hammer on people. And if you're doing your ranged attacks, make sure that you throw on the eruption of life. That way you get your life surges and then start spamming your Eckerd's hand. That way it's uh, using up the life surges as you're using it. Uh, for physical attacks, make sure that you're, I mean, if you're getting close to somebody, make sure that you're applying your Frozen Wrath and Lightning Hammer. And, um, yeah, whenever you're ready to burst, make sure that your Deep Freeze is up and Rage of the North. And uh, you can let uh, Frozen Wrath fall off that way that you can apply it during your burst macro like I, I showed you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And like I said, it's a little more complicated than most of the other builds that I post because I'm able to throw a lot of stuff into uh, different macros for uh, it to be a lot easier for you guys to play. But in this one, you just can't do it. A lot of people do just uh, swap between physical and non-physical attacks on their Shaman builds. And... As you can see, in order to get the best damage, you just can't do that. You you, you can't do it that simply. Uh, you've got to be able to have that burst macro ready to go and execute it in a certain fashion in order to output massive damage and drop people on the fly. Because you're going to be able to charge in, do 30,000 damage to somebody, and get out within 4 seconds or something like that. It's going to be insane. So... Yeah, hit the thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and if you're new to Rift, make sure that you use my referral link whenever you're uh, creating your account. You get a bunch of extra items whenever you join the game, and also you get put on my friends list, I get put on yours, and we can group up once you're level 60. Or if you're watching this video after Nightmare Tide, then it's 65 is what we're going to be PvPing at. So, I hope you guys enjoy. As usual, my name is Grim, and I will see you next time.